In this video we're going to show you how to carry out C3794 testing uh, and in particular one-way delay measurements. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure on the Albedo uh, Ephigenius that we're at the home screen, the top level screen. We can do that a number of ways. One is by clicking on this or pressing this home button in the top right hand corner or by pressing the actual home button on the unit. What I want to do now is to reset the unit to its factory defaults. So that gets rid of all the settings that may be in any of the test menus so that we know we've got a clean sheet uh, as we set up the e set up for the uh, C3794 test. So we're going to press on the test icon. Now one of the things uh, we can I should tell you about is that each of these menus has got its own hierarchy. So if you go into the test menu, for example, then uh, under uh, that menu there are sub-menus. So sometimes you can be down a couple of layers. And one way to get back up to the top level is to either hit the escape button or to press keep pressing the uh, the button of the section you're in which will take you back up. So if I hit the um, test button you can see now that I'm in test performance test. If I hit it again now I'm at the top level which is um, the test button. So I'm going to scroll all the way down the bottom in this menu until I see the factory reset to factory settings. So I'm going to enter on that. It's, then I'm going to then scroll down and, and press yes. And you'll see it says yes for a while, then goes back to no. So basically, it's reset the factory or reset the uh, unit to the factory uh, settings now. So that's that's good. We're back to, uh, like I say, a clean sheet. So what we're going to then do is we're to start setting up the test. So what we need to do is um, Select press on the setup. Now once again here you can see in this breadcrumb at the top we're in setup but we're in the port setting. I want to get back up to the top level. So I hit the button again uh, and again right now I'm right at the top level which is where I want to be. And the first thing I'll do is set the mode. Now you can see at the moment that it's set for Ethernet endpoint. We don't want Ethernet endpoint. We want to select that, go down to datacom endpoint and select that. That's because um, the C3794 adapter uses the uh, datacom port or connects to the datacom port so that's why we want to set it to datacom endpoint mode. Uh, now we're going to go down here to datacom and we're going to select datacom. Now we have a number of settings here, the first one being line. So we go down and select line. We can then select the interface we want. As I say, we use the datacom port so uh, things like C C3794 interface connects to it, but also X21, V24 cables, etc. So if we did press on this, you can see there's a list of different interfaces that can use the datacom port, but we want the C3794, so we're just going to select that. And uh, we now have that as the interface that we're going to be using. You can select the clock source here as well. Now this is really depending on uh, what you're connecting to. If you're connecting to a multiplexer or a network, that's going to provide you clock, then you can select recover clock, or if you want to basically use your own clock, generate clock, then uh, you can use the synthesize section, uh, selection. So we're going to do that. There's nothing really else here we want to change, so we want to then go back up a layer, back up to the datacom selection, so we're going to click on the setup, and then we see line frame test pattern delay again. So now we're going to go into the frame. Now this is where you set um, the uh, line rate effectively of your C3794 interface. So if you click on, on this, we want to make sure the encapsulation is C3794. That's already selected. Now we can select the uh, the transmit rate. Now you can um, basically select um, different transmit rates. Oops. Uh, go back in minute. We can select different uh, transmit rates uh, individually or what um, normally you do is sorry about this is um, select a 64 kilobit rate and then the number of time slots that you want to use at 64 kilobits per second that's the way uh, c3794 is normally set up so i'm just going to select one uh, time slot which is already set there if i want to change it i can just clear that selection and select example 2, uh, but like I said, I'm just going to leave it for 1 for the moment and then press done. And now my uh, time slots have been set up for C3794. So I'm going to hit set up again, go back up a level. 
Now test pattern we don't really need to set if um, we're doing a one-way delay test. We go into test pattern. This is where we can set um, the uh, the pattern using the BERT test. But at the moment we're not going to do that, so we're just going to go back up. Now we need to set up the delay, and this is obviously the delay measurement, uh, if, which we need to conf uh, enable if we're going to do one-way delay measurements. So we click on the enable button, and we're going to select yes. Now the type of measurement mode, we want to do a one-way delay measurement. Now these other selections are where we uh, calibrate the interface, but we can't calibrate the interface at this moment because we need to go and make some other other settings. So we're just going to hit set up again, bring us to the datacom menu, hit set up again to take us up to the top level menu. And now we're going to go down to the bottom here and we've got the reference clock. And this is says what, what sort of clock are we going to use, what's the source of the clock. In this case, uh, the input clock we want to use is the GPS, the GPS GLONASS um, interface, because that's how uh, we derive our timing for one-way delay measurements. So we've selected GPS GLONASS now, we hit set up, and we come back up, up to this point. Now we're nearly there, we're nearly configured, but we need to go one, one other place at the moment, and that's actually to enable the GPS in the unit overall. So we need to go down to the system button here, press system button, and then here we've got time source, and when you can see it's manual, what we want to do is go down and select the GPS uh, enemy AE, uh, source. Now when you do this, you need to make sure obviously that you've got your um, your aerial, your, your GPS aerial connected to the unit, uh, and that it's got a line of sight uh, to some satellites, otherwise you're not going to receive a signal. But what should happen is it should start to try and sync up, and you can see here it's synchronized, it's actually found some satellites, and that's uh, numbers increasing as it finds more, and it is locked, and that that's important. So you need to make sure that you're synchronized and locked. If it's not synchronized and locked, then um, this test is not going to work. So now we can go back up to the, the test setup. Now the nice thing about these soft keys as you go through these different uh, sections is it remembers where you were last time. So if you switch between these, you can always go back to uh, the last point you were, even if you were down one of the sub menus. So, for example, if I now go up, go to the setup, I'm still where I was uh, when I left that uh, selection. So, I want to go back into uh, we set up the reference clock. I want to go back into Datacom now. I'm all ready to basically calibrate the unit. Now we need to calibrate the unit because when we're doing one-way delay measurements, obviously there is a delay inside the unit as it basically assembles the signal, transmits it out, and when it's received, when it comes back in the signal, um, the internal logic in the unit has to decode that signal, etc. We don't want that delay as part of our delay measurement, otherwise uh, we're not really measuring the network delay, we're measuring the delay of the unit as well. So what we need to do is, is calibrate that out. And the way we do that is we go back into this um, de delay menu, uh, and we're going to say adjust zero offset. Now, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have got a loop, uh, an optical loop, on the um, C3794 module. So we just have a single fiber, single short loop fiber, that we uh, basically plug in both sides of the uh, SFP in the in the C3794 interface. So it's got a loop, and we're just going to click on adjust. And what you should see is it's going to go away and make a, a measurement. And basically it's measured the delay of the unit, the internal delay. And now uh, we're calibrated and we're ready to make a measurement. And any measurement is going to have that internal delay subtracted, so we're not, uh, not including that in the result. So we click on the results file, uh, results uh, button, shall I say. Um, once again here you can see results, data column in a sub-interface, so if I just click here on results until I get back up the top, so I'm at the top now, uh, so I want to go into data com and then I want to go down to delay. So now you'll see, um, basically I've got near enough a reading of zero, which is what I'd expect because I've, I've got a loop, but I've also got the message unexpected loop because um, I am looped myself and obviously sometimes you could think you're making a measurement when actually all you've got is a loop on the adapter. Uh, so to make sure that you, you don't make a mistake, it tells you, gives you a message there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove that loop, in which case we remove that loop, um, you 
can see we get a timeout message now because there's no no transmit or receive message. And now we're going to plug this um, the fiber into the actual network under test. So now we plug that in, and you should see here uh, I get a message in the top right corner that says correct. So basically uh, we've got a connection to the far end, and you can see here that uh, we're measuring the return forward path delay and the asymmetry. Now, this won't always be, even if you're in a back-to-back -back situation like we are here with two units back-to-back, -back, you will not always get exactly zero microseconds because there is um, an accuracy of around plus or minus five microseconds in the unit. So, um, you know, the figures, even when you've got a no delay, effectively can vary between plus or minus five microseconds. But uh, in the big scheme of things, if you're measuring delays in milliseconds or whatever, uh, you know, a couple of microseconds is is uh, you know is irrelevant. Now, what we can uh, we can do at this time is we can also just uh, click on these LEDs button here, and this shows us um, some pretty useful information. Here you can see the reference and lock. Now these are the GPS. Um, signals. If we haven't got a GPS signal, we're not locked on the GPS signal for whatever reason, then these will go red and obviously you're not going to get um, a, a measurement, an accurate measurement. So it's always good to make sure that there's no alarms here. Same thing with the signal. These are showing me the signals being being received from the far end. It shows you I've got a path through the network. If for whatever reason I'm connected but I've got, I've got an alarm, if I disconnect this for the moment, you'll see now I've got a loss of signal and I've basically got an alarm on the left there. That means I'm not receiving um, a signal from the other end. So I'm talking to another unit through a network or connected directly, whichever way it is. But if I get an alarm, then I've got a problem. I'm not going to get a I'm not going to get a measurement. So now I'm going to plug that back in, and now those alarms um, go out. Um, so we're we're good to make the test. By the way, if I click, press on the LEDs button here again, I go back to my results. Now you may think, why haven't I got a, um, a minimum and maximum? That's because the test actually isn't running. Although we've got a, a results, uh, current result here, we're not actually running a test at the moment. You can see here it, it stopped. So by either pressing the run, run button on the keyboard on the unit or by selecting this soft button here and selecting run, I'm now going to start running the test. You can now see it says running uh, and the time's ticking away. Now you can see I get a, a current minimum and maximum. And I can just sit here um, for however long I want, um, and it will you know, show me the current measurement, the minimum and the maximum. And that's quite good if you want to go away and come back and just see uh, if there's been any variation over a period of time. Although sometimes you may, it's quite useful to get a, a log of that over, over a period of time. Now if I wanted to get a measurement over a period of time, I can uh, configure the logger. And the way I do that is I go into the test. And I can go into this event logger setup. I want to enable the event logger. I can say yes. And now I might just want to clear any filters in in there. I can just clear any filters by selecting yes and clear all filters. Now I'm going to go into the um, wh what is it? What events do I actually want to to log? And I'm going to go into the here. And I'm going to set them up. I'm going to set up the forward delay the return delay and the asymmetry. So I want to measure these over a period of time or log these over a period of time. So basically now I'm saying the forward delay, return delay and asymmetry are going to be logged. And I can quite simply go in now and start the test again. Run the test. Now I'm running. I go and select my results. You see now I'm running that test. So I can leave this running for a period of time. So say for example I wanted to you know, run a 15 minute test or 30 minute test or whatever, uh, just to make sure that my delay was constant over a period of time. That can be quite useful if, um, you know, if I'm running in maybe on a packet network in, in, as my transmission network and maybe I believe that it may vary over time or I believe there may be problems at certain times of the day. I can, you know, run the test, leave it running for a period of time. Uh, I'm going to stop this now, so I'm going to go back in here and just stop the test. But then what I can do by going into my um, results file, uh, going into delay, sorry, not in my results file, I want to go back up, um, sorry, I'm selecting the wrong thing here, into my results, um, okay, right at the top level, so I'm clicking the results top level here, and click on the event logger, and then it says, okay, do you want to view which, view which log now? 
I've got a log here that um, I've just created, so I'm going to select this one, open it up, and now we can see um, the um, delay over um, a period of time. Now it is colour coded in, in red and green. Basically, if it's anything over zero microseconds, it's going to give me a, um, a red bar. But the important thing is just to I can at any moment in time I can click on any of these and look at the, the result or I can so I can see here for example if I click on um, forward delay one way delay I got one microsecond one microsecond or I go on one uh, one way delay return I got one uh, microsecond but if I get clear you can see where it's gone green it's zero microseconds now another way to look at this is to zoom in on a particular measurement for example the return delay or one-way delay measurement. So if we select that particular um, item, we can then drill down into a line graph. And the line graph shows us um, the measurement over a period of time. And in this particular example, we can see that the return one-way delay is around one microsecond or zero microseconds um, over the length of the test. Now obviously, if we're running a longer test for a longer period of time, we can quite easily see if the measurement has uh, increased beyond certain uh, thresholds or below certain thresholds. Um, and that's really it for the moment. Thank you.